you know, witches be witching. What can you say? What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's Netflix TV original review of Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. And so this episode will focus on episode six, which, of course, is Dreams in the Witch House. And this episode is directed by Catherine Hardwick. Okay, so we have another H.P. Lovecraft story. Uh, this is the second one of the third day. Uh, as we know, the last one was Pikmin's uh, model. And uh, I didn't like that one as much as I thought I was going to. But this is an episode that, you know, if you love H.P. Lovecraft, you probably know this story. If you don't, you know, or if you have never heard of H.P. Lovecraft or read his stories, you may not be familiar with this one. But this is another story. It takes place in the early 1900s. Uh, we, of course, have Rupert Grint, who, of course, is of uh, Harry Potter fame. He plays the main character, William, in this episode. And in essence, he lost his sister at a very young age. Uh, she died of some kind of disease. And she, of course, is uh, taken, I don't know, hostage or taken uh, as, she just, as she has died into this realm that uh, is in this tree area. The tree area is opened up like Field of Dreams. And she's sucked into this world and disappeared appears and throughout his entire life he's been searching for her searching for me to help him find her he is of course a part of this spirit society group uh that just is constantly just monitoring if these uh mediums are real or not most of them are not the one they come across uh, another character played by ismail cruz cordova uh, who's kind of his friend um they find one that is of course played by Nia Vardalos, who, of course, is of uh, my Big Fat Greek wedding fame. And in the process of everything, they just haven't found anyone. Well, one night at a bar, you know, of course, Rupert Grint's character, William, is working there. He comes across these two individuals that are there drinking, and he's had a fight with his friend. And they basically offer him the ability to take this potion or this drink which will allow him, because they've done it too, to go into this world that is very fantastical. Think of like a very dark version of Chronicles of Narnia or something like that. He goes in there and, of course, he finds his little sister who's surprised that he's there. And, of course, he gets sucked back out of the world. This happens two or three times. But it leads him to basically search and figure out what's going on. How is this happening? Why is this happening? It allows him to come across this uh, thing called the Witch House, which is this house that during the Salem Witch Trials and stuff like that, uh, a woman named Keza was accused of witchcraft and she uh, was hung and disappeared. And supposedly her ghost haunts this house. And when, uh, of course, the Rupert Grint's character goes there, he at first, you know, feels like the feels the energy of this house. He's up in the, the room that's haunted and stuff like that. You know, the house is very much of like, a, you know, a, a Tim Burton style, creepy kind of gothic s house and stuff like that. And I really found it really fascinating. Like most of this stuff is just Rupert Grant trying to find his sister in any way possible. Like he said, you know, he found, she got sucked into this tree realm or whatever, and he found her when he took that potion. And we come across a, basically a character that is called Keza, and Keza is this, like, witch-like creature that, you know, has, like, woodland, woodland tree-like features on her. She has, like, flames coming out of her chest. She's, like... All, it's a really cool effect it's really well done really well put together but it's like really cool like when he goes to this house and he's walking around in the middle of the night he goes and he kind of like you know looks in the corner and also in the corner you see like this glowing eyes and you see this you know creature that you don't see very well at some point he takes the the potion again and um he goes and sees his sister again he grabs a, a piece of cloth to prove that you know they're connected and he can pull her out of this realm and one night while he's sleeping he is basically if you've ever been if you're woken up or ever had a dream we're like frozen in place it's almost like a a rope that's kind of around you and kind of you know puts you in place and you can't move and that's when that's when we're introduced to this like little rat creature that looks like you know it has the head of like a human but it is also a rat and that's when we're introduced to the, the demon that is Keza that we see in the poster as well as like the pictures. At first, I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm assuming, you know, that she wants to get back into the, the normal world. Maybe it's going to bring her back. But there's a much sinister approach to it. You know, she has this thing that looks like a, a wand from the wizarding world or something like that. That's a key that allows this world to open up so he can go in there and fetch his sister. But what ends up happening is when he wakes up from the whole situation and scenario, there is a stone tablet on the ground that he puts up against the wall and realizes that um, there's these two individuals that are twins that can pull each other out of the, like, the ghost realm or the, the spirit realm in a lot of respects. 
this is when he goes in. Uh, like I said, th this stuff is cool. I love the uh, kind of creepy macabre feel to it the very uh, like lovecraftian feel like the 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 unsettling nature of it being like the early 1900s but being very um what i would call it. like if you ever watch, like i said if you watch a tim burton film or something like that you see that like the the way everything just like kind of looks earthly and kind of looks like fantastical but also looks dark and disturbing think of like sleepy hollow in a way and he decides he he's going to take the potion again and he goes back into this realm to fetch his sister and that's when the witch, the witch is there, you know, because it's the witch house. That's where the witch Keza is there. Uh, she's trying to find, you know, William's character and his sister to basically encamp this spell so that they can, she can like become part of the real world again. I don't, it's, it's, it's making her out to be like a bad guy, but basically he rescues his sister, brings her back into the real world, but it causes um, a lot of problems, I guess you could say, because the keeper of this house basically shows them these kind of triangle placards and what ends up happening is in order for her to live he has to die and he's going to be killed by the witch by sundown or by uh, sunset and they have to find a way to save him and save the sister and stuff like that but it's you know in, in these little placard things that put together the witch is going to rise up and he's going to be killed and as we see kind of once again it's like in the church from sleepy hollow they go into this church to hopefully be protected. That doesn't happen. Of course, the main nun of the church is killed. And Rupert's Grant character is taken back to the witch's house where he's going to be sacrificed to allow this witch to, you know, I don't know if she's going to inhabit his body or whatever. But they're able to, at least the young, the sister is able to stop the witch from, from doing this and stabs her in the eye and the witch kind of disintegrates. All is right with the world. The young girl, of course, goes back into heaven. She's now free. And you think that's the end of the episode. You think that's the end, the way it's going to happen. River Grant's going to go off into the sunset, just kind of find his way now that it's over with. Nope. <laughs> this has to have a twist in it. So what's kind of great is they go, the, um, their, Rupert Grant's character, William, is, you know, passed out on a bed. There's a drop of blood that drops, of course, onto William's character, and then, you know, his friend, and of course, the innkeeper. They go up to the attic and they open the attic door and they realize that the witch Keza is up there. Like the, the bones of Keza are up there. She's been hiding up there. Um, this is where she was staying to keep herself protected. But there's like fresh blood. And then on top of that, there is that rat creature, the bones. So what's really interesting is the simple fact that if you've seen Alien, you kind of know where this is going. But Rupert Grant starts like squirming around. His chest is like freaking out. He's like screaming. And all of a sudden, the rat comes out of his chest and kills, basically kills uh, Rupert Grant's William character. And <laughs> he's like, I told you it was going to happen. So the, the two individuals, the innkeeper, the, the rat character disappears. And the innkeeper and the friend, of course, walk away. And then the rat comes back, puts himself back into William's body and uses him as like a ratatouille or something like that. He's going to keep the body till it disintegrates. And that's where the voiceover work comes into the fact. I think this is the character that DJ Qualls plays, to be fairly honest, because it sounds like DJ Qualls a little bit. It's a really poorly done CGI character, but it's, it's kind of amazing to watch. It's almost like in a bad way but a good way in a lot of respects so bad it's good because the whole idea of like keza and the witch stuff that's like normal stuff like you could see but just having this rat like character is just kind of beautiful in a lot of respects because it's like very quippy and very um <laughs> it's like uh you know something straight out of like a harry potter film i guess i i don't know it's, it's just a fun character but he uses as, him as a body he's like moving around like real quickly he's like oh i want to wait to see what happens with his body and move on it's like this, the end of fallen or something the denzel washington movie where it transfers its life from body to body and i just and that's a crazy way to end an episode to be fairly honest it's kind of brilliant to be uh, uh something that i wasn't expecting now i can't be 100 percent sure but if i read right in the wikipedia page about this story that hp lovecraft wrote uh, i'm pretty sure it didn't end this way i think this is more of a, a story that uh mika Watkins kind of took from the actual story of dream in the in the witch house and kind of formed its own i don't think there's a, a, a sister in here anywhere I, I don't know like i said i haven't read the story it's just kind of what i'm reading from wikipedia and uh yeah yeah it's a pretty crazy story to be honest it's not perfect it you know it's once again a story that just it, it's a little complicated and convoluted for its own taste 
the kind of mythology that's being placed around it doesn't wholly make any sense sometimes and i think it's trying to be more uh intriguing about like kind of our, our looks into our drive as human beings but it's not 100 percent fully uh enveloped i guess you could say is the easiest way to put it so it definitely falls on that point it is a longer than it needs to be but for somebody like rupert grint who comes into the mix and he is shedding off his Harry po Potter's persona, doing stuff like Snatch, and of course, you know, the M. Night Shyamalan series and the movie that's coming out, him, you know, garnering his status as a, a, an actor, you know, similar to like uh, Henry Melling, who played Dudley in the Harry Potter series. I think Rupert Grint is starting, starting to show his strengths, that he's able to take on these weird projects, and he's showing the, the kind of level of maturity that he's starting to form as an actor, and I think he's actually doing quite better than or more better than of course emma watson who hasn't appeared in much recently and here we are at rupert grant who i didn't think was going to amount to much after harry potter with all the money he made is doing some interesting things and that's right here with it you know i don't think his accent's very good he's trying i think he's trying to do an american accent but his you know his british accent is coming through and like i said you know whatever that rat character is which i think is dj qualls Gina Day it says Gina Davis is in this episode, but I don't know where she was in this episode. She was, I didn't really spot her. So I, I don't know if she's in the episode. It could be a mistake, but uh, Lizzie Johnston who plays Keza does a really nice job. The, I think the, the, the work on the makeup that they did for her, adding a little bit of visual flair and whatnot with like the, the flames and the, the kind of uh, smoldering ashes in her chest, stuff like that really work. And I think it's a, it's a pretty competent episode. From a director that got a lot of flack for doing a Twilight movie. I mean, you know, you got to give her credit for at least trying to do something different. There are moments in here that feel very Catherine Hardwick, and I just think it works on that level. But um, overall, I, if I were to rate this episode, I would give it a solid 8 out of 10. I think it's interesting. I think it's way better than, you know, the Pikmin's model episode, which was really convoluted in a lot of respects. I just wish the episode was a little more on point. It was a little more willing to uh, strengthen its script than what we got i think this is also a problem problem thing of trying to you know upgrade an hp lovecraft story which can be you know very of its time to be fairly honest hp lovecraft's you know stories and his writing are very interesting but they are very of the 1900s and early 1900s or 1800s and so on and so forth so you feel that in this story it does make it a little hampered down by that but it doesn't take away from it being an interesting entertaining story about you know a brother's love for his sister and trying to bring her back and you know not having you know going through all those trials and tribulations it's just pretty crazy that he didn't make it in the end like they said he was going to so but with that said that is gonna be my take on episode six of cabinet of curiosities which of course is dreams in the witch house uh you know good episode eight out of ten so anyways with that said uh in the comments below let me know what you think of this episode what was your overall take on how it concluded how it worked through the entire movie uh, or the entire episode. Let me know what you think overall. But with that said, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find out coming next. If you like the video, awesome. Hit that like button, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for the last two episodes of this Cabinet of Curiosity series. Peace out, guys.